We're now at this incredible place where we're gathering information and data so quickly that we're unraveling what I think is the great unknown, which is the blueprint to life. This is where the story uh, molecule to medicine starts. You first have to understand the disease, understand what has gone wrong in the disease, what's ca causing it, uh, and, and really ultimately identify the target. Research biology is designing experiments that can produce data that will help us predict the next step in the process to developing drugs. That just from the infectious disease space, these bugs have been doing their thing longer than we've been doing ours, uh, by millions of years. They've learned how to evade our immune system. They've learned how to infect our cells. Understanding the fundamental biological process behind cellular growth, you can learn a lot about how to exploit that process. It comes down to designing specific experiments where you're looking at that protein function and modulating its activity that then breaks open the rest of the steps. What you have to realize is that most of our projects do not work. One in 10 projects will be successful in research and then one in 10 uh, will be successful in, in development in, in the clinic. So literally you have to start 100 projects to get one drug. Small successes really build the foundation for doing something that has a chance to change the way we treat disease. Between research and the clinical group, the interaction is very important. It's very important for us to understand what the clinical needs are, what the disease are, what the unmet medical needs uh, are for us to run projects. Oral communication is the basis of how we share ideas and come up with new therapies. The success really boils down to the fact that I look at the world a certain way and the person next to me looks at it a different way. And together, we can design studies that definitively give us a direction or a path forward. And that, that collaborative science is incredibly powerful.